Okay, so um, the next exercise that we want to look at is uh, using springs, right, um, but not external forces like unary forces to uh, build up a strategy for dynamically relaxing a mesh, right? So this is a kind of preview of what we're going to do, right, where we're going to create some simple um, mesh inputs and use springs internal to that mesh to both smooth it and relax it into a, um, a, a shape that has more equilibrium in terms of the forces moving through it. Right, so some examples of um, relaxation that can be found in the world, right, are like uh, soap films. These are photos from the Institute for Lightweight Structures with Fry, uh, from, uh, directed by Fry Otto. Um, or uh, tension membranes. This is some of our uh, student work before, right? And in either case, um, we're getting a smooth shape that's a result of uh, applying some specific forces uh, to a network of elastic members, right? Either soap film or, in this case, a kind of uh, lycra system, right? So in order to um, work with um, dynamic relax relaxation with meshes, uh, let's take a quick um, uh, kind of discussion into, into what a mesh is, right, as a recap. A mesh is a type of geometry that is defined as a set of points, which we'll call vertices, that are arranged into basic elements called faces, right? So here we, can we see one mesh uh, triangle and that has three sides, one mesh quad that has four sides. So internal, internally to the um, vertices, we see a face, right? There's the vertex, and each one of these is an edge, right? So you could have a mesh that looks like a square and it just has one face, or the exact same object and it could have nine faces, right? Where each one of these intersections is a vertex. Um, they are connected to form a face, and in between each vertex uh, that we see is a light uh, purple line here, we have an edge, right? So the, the way to describe the parts of a mesh are through its connectivity and the geometry. Um, so those elements include uh, the vertices, right, which each will have their own index value and a determining way to connect them, right? So this is a command that says I want to connect from 4 to 1 to 3 to 6 in a quad or versus a tri. And this is how meshes work with Rhino and Grasshopper. And what we're going to do as we relax our mesh is to see how coincident each one of those faces is with the plane that um, is local to it. So we're going to see if the faces are flat or not. All right? And um, to test planarity, um, we need to understand what a plane is, right? It's just a two-dimensional space. Um, so why this is relevant for um, design is that if we're making things out of parts and those parts are going to come from flat material, uh, when they go into the um, end structure or shape, right, they need to um, be able to work with that curved shape without deforming too much um, or it needs to be taken up by tolerance, right? So if we have a plane, right, we can test whether or not our mesh face is coincident with that plane and to what degree it is then planar. Okay, so um, we have about 30 minutes left and we have two exercises that we want to do. And I think that that's um, completely doable um, because of the, those new objects that uh, Daniel released in the last uh, 24 hours. So I'm going to save this file and close it. Just to give you a sneak peek, I'll open the next file which is the Relax Mesh. You see here there's not that many objects at all, and that's because uh, a few of these are pre-built object, objects that uh, are the ones found under the Utility tab um, that Daniel has released as a way to kind of uh, expedite some processes. Okay, so I'm going to save, and we'll go back to the starting point of this file, but I'll leave the notes in as we have been before. Right, and we said that we're going to be working with meshes. So, the what we need to do is start with um, creating a mesh in Rhino, right? And 
the nice thing about meshes is that they are, there's only a little bit of information in them. And in that way, the controls for manipulating that, those meshes are really s straightforward and simple, right? So if we go to mesh, polygon mesh primitives, 3D face, I'm going to make, um, by clicking, a simple mesh quad using my grid snaps. I'll go into shaded view so we can see that. So now I have just a simple simple quad, right? There's one mesh face and it has four vertices, right? In order to uh, kind of uh, indicate um, how well this mesh is going to relax when I uh, set up my simulation, I want to make this a little bit more complex. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to rotate and copy this object into place so we can have a kind of minimal surface example. Right, so I'm going to use my rotate 3D command by right clicking this icon here. I'm going to rotate this up 90 degrees with a copy yes. Right, uh, I'll do that, I'll do the rotate 2D with a copy yes and go over to here. And now I'll copy this bottom face up to here. I have a project on, I think. Turn that off. And uh, once more from here to here. Okay, so now I have this kind of open box shape. It's just five mesh faces. Um, I'm going to flip this one so that they're all facing generally the same way. All right, and then I'll take those mesh faces, select them, and I'm just going to join them, right? So now I have one mesh object in Rhino. Perfect. Now I can start to relax that, okay? Um, so the first step is let's get this mesh into uh, Grasshopper. So I'm going to go to my params tab and grab a mesh container under geometry, right-click, set one mesh, and bring my mesh into into Grasshopper. So this is my input mesh. All right. And the reason that I um, did a simple 3D face is because I don't want any internal divisions of these meshes. I just want them to be simple, right? Um, if I turn the edit points on of these, I can manipulate with the gumball any of these points very easily, right? And the whole mesh updates. There's no extra kind of information to them. They're really simple and straightforward. Okay, so um, I've got my mesh inside of uh, Grasshopper, but in order to relax this sh shape into something that's more like a minimal surface, I need to have a finer resolution of springs, which are going to come from mesh edges, so that I can smooth it out. Right? I can't smooth it just with uh, five faces. There has to be uh, many more, as the uh, kind of example image uh, suggested. So if we go to the kangaroo tab, again, this is a utility. There's other ways to do this, but the ut we want to use the utility objects that Daniel just released because they're extremely useful. Right? So if you see quad divide under utility, we're going to use that one. Right? This takes our single mesh face and divides it into smaller uh, faces internal to that original face. All right. So we'll take our mesh that goes into M, and now we need to define how many times it's uh, dividing from there. So I'll turn a preview off here so we can just see. We'll also go to wireframe here so we can just see the, the mesh. All right. Um, I'm not seeing any internal divisions, even though it says here uh, 5 uh, value in D. So I'm going to make sure that I go to display and check that my mesh edges are previewed on. You can also do this with a shortcut, control M. All right, so now I can see that I have five internal faces. All right, I'm going to use a panel, and you can um, define uh, a different value for how many divisions there will be. Um, I'll say maybe 10, but remember that as you um, increase this number, um, it's going to dramatically increase the complexity of your file. So 
um, a kind of general rule of thumb when we're using our simulation uh, tools here with Kangaroo is that we don't want to simulate anything more complex than we have to because it's got to be calculated in time and therefore um, and if we want to see it kind of a live update where it's moving around we don't want too many extra calculations going along with that so complex enough to get the job done but not too complex where um, it's slowing our computer down and we can't actually experiment with it all right so I'm gonna say 10 that sounds good to me uh, these are my mesh divisions the number for my mesh divisions. All right, so now I have one mesh with many more faces, right? Um, and again, the idea here is that if we had this mesh, we could find each one of these edges and turn it into a spring, right? If you were wanting to do that longhand, you would have to go to the mesh tab under analysis, get all the edges, then turn them into springs like we had done before. Luckily, again, the uh, utilities here under Kangaroo are extremely useful in that regard. Um, there's another one that can be found here that is called Springs from Mesh. This turns all edges into of a mesh into springs. All right. Um, so our joined mesh faces here are being brought into Grasshopper we're dividing them into more faces and then we're going to take each one of these edges and um, turn it into a spring. 